Hello, can you hear me? Um, thanks a lot, Shreya. Uh, right. Um, so, I'm going to talk in Tamil. It's a requirement that if you apply to this university, you would be understand English and follow classes in English. So, I'll try myself to restrict myself to English. But in case if you don't understand, please ask me to speak in Tamil. I can always come back to Tamil. Okay. Uh, so, let me begin with uh, a brief introduction about the university. So I am working in um, Azim Premji University, which is uh, a part of Azim Premji Foundation. Uh, so maybe let me just talk a little bit about that before getting into programs at Azim Premji University and so on and so forth. Right. So uh, this university was founded by, as you can all guess, uh, Mr. Azim Premji, who was former chairman of Vipro. So I think you might know about the company called Vipro. It's an IT company. It didn't start as an IT company, but now it's known for IT services, right? Um, right, so, but this is not called Vipro University. This is called Azim Premji University for a specific reason. The reason is that the university started for a particular purpose. So this, this university is not for offering some uh, uh, courses that are typically offered in other universities, right? So let me just tell you about what this Azim Premji Foundation so uh, Azim Ramji Foundation was started in 2000, I think, around 2000. The purpose of the, uh, the foundation was to improve the uh, public education in India. What is public education? Public education is the education that's offered in government schools. 
uh, in various states and uh, by central gov central government in India, right? We know that uh, we typically get this complaint from parents and in general from society that uh, government schools are uh, doesn't offer do they don't offer quality education for children. Uh, I would uh, rather send my child to a private school and things like that. This situation has to change, and that is the purpose of uh, Azim Ranji Foundation. So they work closely with uh, government, uh, 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 state governments, government functionaries at various levels. Uh, for example, state, district, and block levels. And uh, they, 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 their aim is to improve uh, public school education, right? Uh, so after working for around seven years on, on the field, uh, they realized that uh, we don't have enough college-educated uh, uh, people to work in school education. Right. So that is why they started a university, so that they can actually incorporate uh, good quality education uh, and people from there actually can get back to school education. And that is the purpose of the university in the first place. So to begin with, the university started in 2011 and they started with uh, MA uh, uh, courses, MA program. Uh, they started with MA in education and MA in development. So these are directly related to, directly linked to school education, right? Recently, they have, after, for example, uh, uh, COVID happened, uh, now they're also focusing on public health, not only education, but also public health. So we also have starting a new program in uh, master's program uh, 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 in public health, for example, right? So we have two campuses, one in Bangalore, uh, in Karnataka, another one in Bhopal. Bhopal's, uh, Bhopal campus started only recently. So we're starting courses in Bhopal from this year, 2023, right? Uh, all right, so that is the beginning of the university. But then we realized that it's not just MA in education and MA in development is useful, but also we should start some BSc and BA programs so that people will get uh, basic college education before getting into work, uh, the world of work, right? So we started to uh, undergraduate programs in 2015. So we began with BSc, some BSc programs and some BA programs. Now we have expanded these programs to some BA programs, some BSc programs, and also BSc BEd programs. Okay. Uh, we will get to what kind of programs we offer, but maybe I'll stop here for time being. You have, if you have any questions till now, please ask, uh, and then we can proceed. Okay, in case if there are no questions, let me just proceed. So before we get into what kind of programs we offer, we have to understand what kind of education we try to offer in the university. Okay, so let me just start with a simple story. It's not a story, but it's more like uh, a fake story, made up story, right? So all of you might know that uh, uh, the first revolution in terms of uh, human development happened around a million years ago. So what happened a million, million years ago was we, we learned as, uh, as a species, we learned uh, how to cook with fire. So in fact, what happened was our uh, brain started developing to do uh, complex uh, cognitive processes. So our brain became bigger. We learned to speak. We learned to do things. We learned to create stuff and things like that, right? It was around a million years ago. But then for next uh, 90,000 years, nothing happened. Nothing seriously happened. So I'll, 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 I'll take the specific questions about the university uh, towards maybe towards the end. So my idea is that if you're asking a question, uh, please restrict it to the things we have already spoken about. Okay, that will be easier for me to answer, right? So we'll, we'll, I'll answer the general question towards the end. Right. So what I was saying, yeah, I was saying that around a million years ago, the first revolution happened. It was cognitive revolution. We, we began to think. We began to evolve as a species. So we, we, we differentiated ourselves from monkeys. That's what happened. 
around 10000 years ago the next biggest revolution happened which was agriculture revolution so what we started to do was we started to stay in one place we started to uh, harvest things we started to uh, we learned to store things we learned, we learned to uh, develop as a uh, culture as a as a civilization before that we were only hunter gatherers for 90000 years right next big thing happened around 500 years ago what happened was uh, some at the, at the level of culture revolution happened what kind of revolution uh, reformation and renaissance and, and uh, stuff like that right next big thing happened uh, around uh, uh, 250 years ago industrial revolution okay. Yes, Are you asking some question? I think somebody is asking some question. Yes. From Kallakurchi. Is there a question? No. Thanks. Um, so uh, what Alika was saying, the big next big thing happened around two three years. That was industrial revolution. If you take revolutions after revolution, the very very recent revolution that happened was. Uh, all of you might be familiar with it revolution so all of you are holding a mobile phone in your in your hand and you are very familiar with social media this happened very very recently it happened around uh, 50 to 30 to 50 years ago and more recently around one year ago the next big thing happened which is chat gpt so this is revolution in ai so what does this say this says this tells us a story this tells us a moral what is the moral of the story moral of the story is that we are our development is accelerating so for example uh, if i lived some let's say uh, uh, 8000 years ago uh, then whatever my father did whatever my grandfather did i would have been doing the same thing basically hunting and gathering if i had uh, born some let's say 1500 years ago whatever my father did whatever my grandfather did was sufficient for me i was doing agriculture but now whatever i am doing is very very different from what my father is doing what my father was doing what my grandfather was doing my child will do the things that are very very different from what i am doing that's the meaning of it. in the sense that whatever i have learned in school and in college is not so much helpful for my child because they will get into different kind of jobs different kind of they will be living in a different world they will be facing different kind of issues different kind of problems to solve right so if that is the case what kind of offer what kind of education one has to go through that is a question right um so th- i think there is a question there is a hand raised maybe let me take that question before proceeding gms girls hostel uh, i don't know from which place is there a question can you unmute yourself please okay okay thanks thanks okay so so what kind of education do we require do we require uh, to go through whatever people have done they have again okay i see one more the same same person has raised their hand is there a question gms girls hostel is it by mistake i'm assuming it's by mistake and uh, go ahead so what we're trying to say here is that moral of the story is that whatever you know right now might not be useful in the next decade in 10 years you won't you will not probably use the knowledge that you learned in school or in college or in job you will have to reinvent yourself at least every once in uh, 10 10 years or at least once in 5 years so once you uh, learn to for example understand chat gpt something else will come once you learn try to learn that something else will come right so how are you going to navigate the situation and there are problems already Uh, that are faced by the world for example the different kind of problems social problem political problems there's war happening between many different countries right now as you might already follow we know that uh, the things like uh, covid might come again pandemics you also know that uh, problems like uh, ecological uh, problems might come again uh, so we we are already facing lot of uh, floods in our country in elsewhere right so how are you going to navigate all the situation what kind of education do you think will help you to navigate this kind of problems that is the kind of question we want to answer right so and at as a university we think that any education 
that is useful for 21st uh, learner 21st century learner has to equip them to deal with this kind of issues let's try to understand how to deal with this kind of issues right so one is that there are two aspects to it well, first aspect is that what do you know right how do you gather knowledge and how do you know and how do you verify that whatever knowledge you have gathered is right right so in you know that if you if you go through social media itself you will say that same story will be said in uh, at least five different uh, versions they will say that whoever is the right whoever is right whoever is wrong how people interpret it that would be very very different right? so how do you know that who is saying truth who is not saying truth how would you say that how would you convince yourself that uh, how uh, 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 which what is truth what is not truth that's one second thing is that we are talking about drastic changes to the world right and drastic changes means there will be invariably conflicts people will not agree with you people will agree with you and you will have to take a stance right that means you will you will end up uh, uh, end up in a situation where you you, you, face, you face conflict you will have to disagree with people and you will have to argue with people and you have to make convince yourself and things like that that actually means that at human level you will have to uh, navigate uh, conflict right so how do you understand how do you kind of fix this issues how do you kind of navigate this issues education at 21st century should under, uh, address this this two issues that's what we think as a university therefore we decided that we will offer a liberal arts education for undergraduates which is fully residential uh, fully residential means you will stay in the campus for all the four years in a hostel so that you can kind of get the objective so how do you how do we achieve this objective so what is the meaning of liberal arts education liberal arts education is very different from professional education so what is the professional education for example if you apply to an engineering college you are getting trained in one particular discipline for all the 3 or 4 years if you if you are enrolling in a bsc uh, uh, program for example you are for example in physics you will be learning only physics for uh, all the 3 years you might get some additional uh, knowledge but you are learning only things that that are offered in physics but in a liberal arts uh, education what you would, what you would get to know is not only the subject you have chosen for example if you chosen let's say english as your discipline not only knowledge from that but also knowledge from other disciplines and how they interact with each other you will get a overall view of all the disciplines how they interact with each other now to make sense of things that's one uh, and second thing is that I, i was talking about fully residential uh, program right what does this equip you with you will be forced to interact with people who are not like you you will be uh, staying in a campus and you'll be from morning to evening you'll have to interact with people who are different from you or, or for example who are not from the background that you are coming from who might be from different state of india who might be from different uh, environment from you and things like that right so how do you that actually means that you will you will end up in uh, conflict you will have to navigate this by developing relationship with your uh, classmates and other people so that is the aim of this program right so yeah so let me just uh, summarize whatever i said till now Uh, we offer ug programs that are four year and it are they, it's fully residential program and we try to ensure that we four aspects are fulfilled for you right what are the aspects any student who gets into the program should be able to get quality rigorous disciplinary knowledge that actually means that you will be getting very high quality there will be no compromise on what you learn it will be very very high quality education in whatever discipline you chose right so that you will be able to further uh, go and uh, uh, do higher studies in your in the, in the disciplinary the discipline you have chosen you also should be able to get broader skills and competencies useful to enter the workforce so many of i we assume that many of the student who are entering the university they will stop at bsc uh, they might not pursue a higher education they were they might want to get into a, a, a job right so how do we kind of ensure that they get enough skills and competencies to enter the uh, world of work we have to ensure some courses are kind of equip you to do that uh, and the third thing that i was talking about the the, the purpose of uh, 21st century education how do you get critical and analytical reasoning skills to navigate the issues uh, of the world of the of, of 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 contemporary world right and finally uh, we help and the this course this program should help you to develop relationship between people who are not like you who are who are not coming from the background that you are coming from right so this is what i was uh, saying till now so if you have any questions probably pause it for a moment
if you have any questions please ask else we can now i can get into the programs and uh, So there are no questions. So let me just uh, uh, show you some. Uh, let me just talk about the program that we offer at the university. So I thought I'll create a PPT and show you the PPT. But then I thought you might not go back to the PPT. If at all you want to apply to the university, you'll go back to the website of the university, right? So let me just show you the website of the university. So what I'll do is I'll just share the screen, and then I'll show you our website. So if we just uh, from the beginning, it goes. If I type Azim Premji University, just type no, Azim Premji University in Google, it will give you the link. The first link is the web page for the university. So this should be the link you should be seeing. And if you want to understand what we kind of what we do here, I mean whatever I uh, said till now, you can read from here. So there is this uh, sub page called uh, about us. We talk. I talked about Azim Premji Foundation, our story, and so on. Just you can. If you want, you can go back and check. But what you are interested in is undergraduate programs at the university. So let me just open that for you. Okay, so you will see uh, there are different programs offered at the university, and there are videos for you to maybe watch and uh, understand. But let me just go back to text form of it. Okay, so I want to know more about the four-year UG program. What should I? What What is that? I have I have to click here, and this will take me to the page where they explain. uh what is the meaning of uh, four undergraduate programs and stuff like that right so maybe let me come back here but uh, let me just uh, show you what what are the programs available at the university programs means uh, bsc or ba or bsc ba degree so what you will, you might call a degree we are calling it a program, right so let me just show you uh, what are the programs offered here so just give me one sec just give me one sec i have to yeah so if you if you just check here there is one page which says what are all the programs offered at the university uh, there are as i said there are two campuses one in bangalore one in bhopal so this page says that uh, what are the courses offered and where they are offered for example we have bsc in biology which are offered in both bhopal and uh, uh, bangalore uh, we have bsc in chemistry bsc in environmental science and sustainability we have bsc in mathematics bsc in physics so these are all the bsc programs we offer and then we offer a ba in economics ba in english ba in philosophy ba in history and ba in social science these are the ba degrees we offer these are all uh, uh uh liberal arts programs but we do offer one professional degree which is uh, which is called bsc beard uh, degree so this is a dual degree in science and education if you do this program and if you graduate you will not only learn science but also you'll be able to teach science in school so you will specialize in biology chemistry physics and mathematics and uh, you will be able to teach in a school so this is the only professional program we offer okay um so just to go through it once again we offer some science programs we offer some ba programs and we offer one bsc ba program. we don't offer some of the programs that you might expect us to offer for example we don't offer a course in chemistry uh, sorry uh, commerce we also don't offer uh, a program in engineering for example we don't offer any program in computer science for example as of now it may come in future but as of now these are the only programs are okay let me let me pause for a moment again any questions okay if there are no questions let me just again go back to uh go back to the go back to the thing so let me tell you if you choose to uh, join the university what kind of experience you'll go through right so let me just again go back here okay there is something uh chennai district government model school has raised a hand uh, maybe they have a question uh do we have a question yeah oh visual communication we don't offer but we have something that is very close to visual communication i'll come back to that we don't have a 
BA in visual communication or BS in visual communication, but we have something that is related to that. Okay, let me come back to that. Okay, so let me just uh, not this one. This is the one. Yes. Yeah. Wait. 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 So can you see? I am scrolling the page. Can you see the scroll? You can't. No. Okay. So okay. Can you see now? I am scrolling the page. Ah, great. Great. So. uh yeah so whatever is it there so every program will have four different components uh, there namely uh, you will have disciplinary major you will have occupational minor you will have common curriculum and then you will have flexible credit so let me just try to explain what are these things okay so suppose you apply to let's say bsc in physics that would mean that your disciplinary major is physics that actually means that you will you will do some courses in physics we uh, we will offer if you choose to do uh, any uh, any major for example you will undergo minimum of 12 courses in that major minimum of 12 that means that means maximum can be anything right so they are divided into core courses and elective courses so what are core courses and elective courses core courses are the courses that you should do as part of your discipline there is no negotiation there you will take it you will take this courses from in first year in second year and in third year so you can might call them introductory intermediate and advanced courses uh, and then you will on the top of it you can also uh, take some elective courses that might be from for example physics or they might be from uh, related disciplines you, you might do a course that is mixing uh, physics and mathematics or for example uh, uh, physics and chemistry and so on and so forth okay that's for first three years but this is four year course in the fourth year what you will do is if you choose to do it you will do you will do what is known as a research thesis uh, so what you do is you will you kind of do a independent research under a faculty member under a, a teacher uh, and you will write a thesis and uh, if you successfully do it for last one year you will you will get what is known as bsc with honors degree right so this is one option uh, okay and so that is first component of it first component is disciplinary major what is second component second component is occupational minor what is it anybody who takes a uh, who uh, who joins the program is required to do an occupational track so what is occupational track as i said earlier we assume that after the bsc after the program here you should be able to get into work that means you should be able to you should have this enough uh, skills and competences to get into the world of work therefore we offer a uh, occupational uh, minor which means that you will have to take a minimum of five courses uh, plus some additional experiences in one of these uh, areas as of now only these are uh, offered but in 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 future we will certainly increase the number we will we are, for example we are planning to uh, offer psychology for example we are planning to offer computer science for example and also statistics for example they they all will be part of uh, minor for example i received a question recently uh, that uh, do we offer uh, program in visual communication we don't do we don't offer any visual communication uh, uh, program but we do offer a minor in media and journalism which means what which actually means that you will do you will do five courses in media and journalism you will actually work with uh, people from uh, media and journalism including text media uh, social media uh, visual media uh, things like that and you will get hands on experience of how to create stuff how to write stuff you will get feedback on that you it's not just you are doing it for uh, for the sake of doing it but you are also getting grades for it you are getting credits for it uh on the top of it suppose that you choose not to do a research thesis in the fourth year you can actually choose a, a semester long internship in one of the areas that you chose for example if you have chosen media and journalism in your seventh semester you can actually go and work in a uh, media house uh, for example uh, it can be a newspaper company it can be a uh, visual media company it can be uh, advertisement company and things like that you will get hands on experience of how they do work for one semester based on which you will complete your fourth year right so this is a compulsory part of the program this is called occupational track and the third component here that i talked about is called common curriculum so what is that the common curriculum is as it as the name suggests common curriculum is common for all the students who enroll to the program uh, 
we try to uh, ensure that everybody in the everybody who joins the university for undergraduate program go through a uh, basic minimum courses in the things that we think uh, are really really required for uh, graduate which are uh, critical thinking reasoning communication things so you will undergo two courses called critical reading and writing where the foundational skills of critical thinking reasoning communications are developed and also you'll go undergo a program called uh, a course called uh, uh, public reasoning on the top of it you will also undergo a, pro, uh, a course called understanding india it's not just one course it's like, i think three courses where you'll understand uh, various aspects of india so what is what does it mean to be an indian citizen you'll understand that from the perspective of uh, the issues that we are facing okay so it's not just history it's it's, it's lot more a lot more deeper than that and also you will undergo what is known as creative expressions this is one of the attractive courses so what we call crx creative expressions you will do one course minimum of one course in whatever uh, areas that you choose for example it can be learning guitar it can be painting it can be pottery it can be uh, theater it can be dance it can be martial art it can be yoga it can be sport it can be football it can be volleyball it can be various things right we don't consider them as extra curricular activities they are part of curriculum so you will get credits for it you will get evaluated for it. for example one of the creative expressions is running uh, so if you run for i don't know 10 hours you will get one credit things like that so. and on the top oh can i can you all see this no oh sorry my bad so something has happened let me share it once again uh, sir yeah Good evening, sir. Hi. Yes. Sir, yes, yes, please. Sir, what are the courses available for biology students, sir? Ah, great. That's a good question. So let me just uh, come back to. I'll, I'll come back to that question, but let me just complete what I was saying. Yes. I'll I'll just come back to that question. How to how to understand not only biology for but for any course, right? So let me just come back to the question. Um. Where was I? I was here. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm answering the question, but give me one sec so that I can share the things. Okay, I'll answer the question, but this before that, let me just this last part, which is flexible credit. Is there a question? Now, but now is present, sir. Sorry, Rajeshri, you have a question. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll just get back to it in a moment. But let me just complete this so that there's one clue here to what I was saying, right? So the fourth component is flexible credits. Apart from whatever you are learning as part of your uh, basic discipline, you also have what are you you will you, you can do a maximum of ten courses from whatever uh, discipline you want to choose, right? For example, you can choose to do additional courses within your discipline. so it's i i i i want to do a msc in physics for example but 12 courses are not sufficient for me what does it mean you actually can do additional courses in your own discipline okay i'm sorry i heard uh, okay uh, it looks like someone is presenting can rajeshri uh, it will be nice if you stop presenting and i can present it because i i might be saying things but i probably people are not seeing what i'm saying can you stop presenting please rajeshri thank you um can you see my screen no sorry i'll just try to share right um ஒரு <laughs> a bsc uh, ba in economics that's your major but philosophy as your minor you can take five courses in your minor this will this will come in your uh, degree certificate 
you can also choose to do anything else that you want to do you don't have to take it from one discipline but you can mix it up with other disciplines it can be from interdisciplinary uh, courses it can be from different disciplines okay so let me just uh, pause it for a moment if you have any questions here let me uh, answer them and after that i'll, I'll answer the question that from that came from karlur yeah. any questions here Okay. So let me answer. Uh, see, I can say what are the courses offered in biology, but if someone else asks, uh, someone else wants to know courses offered in uh, economics, what are the courses in math, things like that, I will tell you how to really find. Them. If you want the courses offered, I will tell you. Yeah. Just go back to the panel panel here. Let's just give me one second. Okay. So, uh, so as I said. Uh, if you go to study you will see undergraduate programs if you click there you will see this if you click apply now it will take you this, it will take you to this page where so various things are mentioned here i showed page last month okay so suppose now i want to understand what are the course of bsc in biology i'll click here it will take me to a page where uh, the courses in biology are kind of explained here right so i will be able to see Uh, a video where biology faculty are explaining the program if we go down i'll be able to see different kind of things that they offer in biology for example here they talk about course structure so they they don't probably they probably are not talking about different kind of courses that are offered here but they are certainly talking about what are the uh, uh, objectives behind the aims of the courses that they are talking about, right So, for example, it says that uh, please visit this page to learn more about the four unit. Oh, yeah, here. So, for example, in biology, if you go here, it will tell you what are the courses offered as core. For example, introduction to biology is one course. Uh, uh, molecular biology and biochemistry is another course. Introduction to genetics is another course. Understanding plants, evolutionary biology, and so on. So, these are all core courses, and they also have listed elective courses: introduction to biophysics, introduction to ecology, introduction to animal behavior, and stuff like that. so you can find what are the courses offered under various disciplines by doing whatever it is just okay so rather than answering it directly i'm telling you how to find uh, how courses what kind of courses are offered i hope that answers the question that came from kadlur okay rajeshri and uh, kanna kurchi have raised their hands Do you have any questions please ask Uh, no. Yes. No. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, please, please ask a question. Can you get the panel? Please repeat it again. Can you tell us what are the courses offered? Ah, okay. Uh, okay. What uh, time are you planning to be there? But you know, in that part, you know, in that part, that matter. Why not? I still don't understand what you ask. You know, something is not clear to me. பண்ணுவீங்க அதுல ஒன் ஆஃப் த கோர்சஸ் வில் பி மாலிகுலர் பயாலஜி அண்ட் பயோ கெமிஸ்ட்ரி ஓகே நான் வந்து பயாலஜி பேக்ரவுண்ட்ல இருந்து வரல ஸோ ஐ டோன்ட் நோ வாட் இஸ் கண்டென்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் பட் நீங்க இதை கிளிக் பண்ணீங்கன்னா ஃபர்தர் தேவ் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் இட் யூ வாட் திஸ் கோர்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலி என் டேல்ஸ் வாட் திஸ் கோர்ஸ் வாட் யூ லேர்ன் இன் திஸ் கோர்ஸ் ஓகே ஸோ ஐ ஐ மை செல்ஃப் டோன்ட் நோ வாட் இஸ் பயோ கெமிஸ்ட்ரி அன்ஃபார்ச்சுனேட்லி 
if you ask me any any uh, course from mathematics i'll be able to explain sorry about my inability this is help the for example in the page la you can see that they are saying that we will study how biomolecules come together to form a living cell and how they can come together to create a functioning organism you will you will try to understand you will try to understand this uh, if you take the course so that's what i'm assuming the content of the course unfortunately i won't be able to explain because i'm not from biology background i'm so sorry about that does that help okay uh, any other questions before we move on to how to apply and how the admissions uh, process happens okay so before uh, so next i'll talk about admissions how to apply and uh, what is expected in the entrance exam and so on and so forth but before that let me just tell you something which is which is little interesting okay this probably don't know uh, i'll share one interesting uh, page um there is a there is a there is a ah here it is so there i said there are two campuses right one is in bangalore one is in bhopal i'll just show in maps google maps where our campus is okay you might think that we are inside bangalore but actually not we are not inside bangalore so this is bangalore our campus is here this red pin is our university and this is tamil nadu okay so if i zoom it in you can see that you can literally walk in nadande perla tamil nadu okay so in fact in university in the kosura kannal paakalam it's very very close to kosur i can just zoom out and show it to you so we are closer to kosur which is inside tamil nadu than to bank okay so i'm assuming that you might be want you might want to apply to bangalore at least at least people from krishnagiri district and velu district and salem district at least this part of the people uh, i mean if you are coming from any of this uh, northern the districts of uh, tamil nadu this university is pretty pretty close to you okay yeah that's one one thing that i want to share before proceeding okay right so let me just uh, share how admissions happen so let me just go back to the program So if you go to the web page again, there is something called uh, a tab called admissions and aid. Okay, let me just open that. Let me tell you. So I, you were interested in undergraduate admissions. So let me just open that here. Okay. So you will see a lot of questions that you might already have in your hand uh, uh, here. So for example, what is eligibility? Who can apply to the program? Anybody who completes twelfth standard with fifty percent marks can apply. to this program you might be from icsu you might be from cbsu you might be from state board i am assuming you are all from state board so you can apply to the program you can join the program uh, when you up, when you join the program you should have got 50% in your uh, total score okay um these things probably not useful for this discussion so let me just skip it now how do you apply so if, if you click here uh, it will take you to a page you just yeah so you 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 will be taken to this page where you can sign up and you can just apply it here okay so this is this is the place where you will really apply the program if you are doing plus 2 you i think all of you are doing plus 2 so you will be able to And what are some important dates to apply? So the application form is already open. We opened the application form in October. Uh, the form is already open now. The last day to apply to the program is twenty second of November. This is around one month before the entrance test. We have national entrance test on twenty fourth of December, the day before the Christmas. Okay. Um, so let me. So that are the dates. And if you apply. how do you how do you get selected to the program so first step in the process is you applying once you apply you will have to write an entrance test that is on 24th of december so what will you actually see in the so let me just tell you some more thing before you proceed okay so you will have a 3 hours test which is a national test 
which is taken online. So it will not be pen and paper test. You will have to sit in front of a computer and take the test. Okay, you will get a hall ticket, uh, which will have the information about the exam and uh, where the exam is and things like that. You'll also, you, you can also take a sample test before you actually take the test, right? So what, what, is, what does the uh, exam look like? Let me, let me complete this and then come back to the question, if you have questions. Just, just give me one sec, I'll, I'll just explain this. So that, um, yeah, can you see the tab? Yeah, yeah, oh, where is the tab? Yeah, so, so you will have 20 reading comprehension questions. That actually means that there are 20 questions from English. So you will have to read a passage and then you will have to answer 10 questions. Again, you will have to read a passage. You will have to answer 10 questions. These are all multiple choice questions. That means a question will have four options. You will have to select the right option. And there are no negative marks. If you uh, if your answer is right, you will get uh, two marks. If your answer is wrong, or if you don't attempt any question, you will get zero marks. Similarly, you will have 20 mathematics questions. So this is not just mathematics. It will also, be also uh, logic questions and also uh, uh, data, data interpretation questions. So there will be some uh, graph given. You will have to interpret the graph. Okay. Apart from that, you will also uh, uh, write five MCQ questions from clusters you have chosen. For example, if you apply to BSE, you will have to write five questions, which need not be from the discipline you've chosen for. You might be, you might have applied to BSc Physics or BSc Mathematics, but you will have to answer questions, five questions from science in general. Similarly, if you apply to a BA program, you will have to attempt questions from uh, humanities or social science. Okay. Again, there are no negative margins for this. On the top of it, you will have to type uh, a descriptive. Uh, uh, so you, there will be one simple question about uh, writing your experience about something or things like that. You will have to type uh, 200 to 300 page, two, sorry, 200 to 300 words answer uh, in the computer. So this is the format of the exam. Okay. So all the all of this will happen uh, on a computer. You will have to, you will have to go to a center where there is a computer setup. You will just go there and type the choose the answers and so on. Okay. Now well, let me just see if there is any question. Yes, question. What about placement? Ah, okay, that's a good question. But I'll, let me just complete the admissions before getting into placement. Okay. Uh, Chennai District Government Model School. Is that the same question you wanted to ask? About placement? Yeah? Okay. I'm assuming... Okay, I, we will come back to placements little... Uh, later, but let me just uh, complete this. So suppose you want to see what kind of questions are asked. Okay. You can go and check this uh, in sample questions. We have given questions from pre previous years here. You can check the questions, try to answer them. Uh, the answers are also available so that you know you are prepared for the exam. Right. So I can tell you that at least the questions that we ask here, uh, reading, comprehension, reading comprehension and uh, uh, quantitative reasoning, these questions are to ensure that you will be able to take the common curriculum courses. Therefore, the questions are from your school mathematics. We will, you will not see any question beyond your 10th standard. So you don't have to prepare very hard on your plus one and plus two. Okay. I see some, something in chat. Can you check with state theme research? Okay. Um, so that is the admission. That is the entrance test. Once you clear the entrance test, you will be called for a personal interview. So every student who is going to join the university will have to undergo an interview. It might happen online over, let's say, Zoom, or you might be called to, you might be asked to come to the campus in Bangalore and you'll do the interview. Okay, that depends on, mostly it will be online, right? So what is that we're trying to uh, uh, understand in the personal interview? In the personal interview, we want to understand whether you are really interested in our university, in our program, do you want to really undergo this experience, this four-year experience of uh, liberal arts, uh, fully residential program, where you will be trying to understand how to learn than understanding something that, uh, that you want to learn deeply, right? Uh, so it's more like knowledge versus experience. The university a right match for you, are you a right match for the university? That's what we're trying to understand from the personal level. Okay. Maybe let me take a break here.
and probably answer some questions if you have any. Saravanan, yes, Swaminathan P has raised their hand. There are two people. I don't know. Same people. Yes, please. Please ask if you have a question. I'm not hearing the question, so we wait. What about placement? Yes, good question. Let me let me answer the question. Okay, but no questions about admissions. Okay, so let me again share the screen. So we were here. So if you if you before so see this is how you have to think, right? You are applying to the university. You have to first write the entrance exam. You have to join the university. You have to pay the fees. Then you have to graduate, you have to pass all the courses, then placement comes, right? So that's the order in which I was thinking. So, so in the in the same page, you can see career opportunities and academic avenues. We'll, this is the question you're actually asking. This is what you're calling this placement, is this. So before that, let me just talk about fees and financial aid because this is a very, very important aspect. As you know already, this is not a public university, this is a private university. That actually means that the fees will be a little higher than a public university. Okay. The information is given here. So every year, you might have to pay around, for tuition fee, you'll have to pay around uh, 3 lakh. And for accommodation, you might have to pay for, the, for, for a year, okay, for uh, around uh, 80,000. On the top of it, every month, you might have to spend around 5,000 to 6,000 for your food. It might already scare you, but don't be scared because the next part is will help you to understand how to navigate the situation. So, we are a philanthropic university, which actually means that Azim Premji Foundation is the one uh, who is running the university. It is not run by fees by the students. Okay. The fees will not cover all the expenses of the university. It is covering only minimal percentage of the university. I think around 20 to 40 percent of the expenses are only covered through the fees. So that actually means that around 70% of the expenses of the university are, are not taken from students. They are coming from uh, Azim Premji Foundation, right? Therefore, we ensure that paying fee should not be a hindrance for your education. So we offer scholarship to anybody, any student who requires it. So for example, if your family income is less than 12 lakh per annum, you are eligible for scholarship. Whenever you apply uh, to the university, you can immediately say that you want to apply for financial assistance if you require one. Okay. What does it mean? It actually means that if you are, if your family income cannot support your education, the university will support your education. So we will offer tuition fee, accommodation charges and food for, for some people who get 100% scholarship. So if, we, if the university thinks that you require financial assistance, you require scholarship, we can give it in different uh, Varieties. So it might be 25% scholarship, it might be 50% scholarship, 75% scholarship, or 100% scholarship. For example, if you get 100% scholarship, you don't have to pay a penny to the university. Everything will be taken care of by the university. We don't have, for example, reservation. We are, we are not talking about merit-based scholarship. We are talking about need-based scholarship. If you are eligible to join the university and if you can't pay for your fee, university will take care of it. That is the idea. Okay. I'll tell you one more information. For example, this year in MA uh, education, we have more than 50% of the students getting scholarship. So they're not paying any fees. Okay. So with that, let me go to the career opportunities. Okay. So in, so you, in the same page, you can see that there is this tab called career opportunities and academic avenues. So what are the opportunities uh, you can have after finishing the program? The first option that, that should come to your mind is higher education. Whether you want to do higher education, for example, if you have done BSc, do you want to do an MSc? If you have done a BA, do you want to do an MA? Yeah, do you want to do an MA? Or maybe cross-cultural. For example, there are programs in India right now which are not discipline specific. We have programs like MA in education, MA in policy, MA in development, things like that. You want to get into that one. So any kind of higher education, can you get into them? Yes, we do help you to get into them. For example, so 
here you're talking about higher education in india and higher education abroad people have gone into this place these are all the universities and uh, institutions where our, our uh, students have gone into in the past so people have joined ashoka university people have joined azim prem university for ma for their ma delhi university they have gone into iits they have gone into triple iits they have gone into icers they have gone into ncbs and things like that. people have also gone into foreign universities in different countries uh, people have gone into for example texas texas tech people have gone into yale people have gone into university of massachusetts uh, people have gone into uh, universities in europe and various places right? suppose you don't want to pursue higher education but you want to get into work do we offer any kind of do we facilitate that yes we do facilitate for example people got into various kind of uh, opportunities various kind of organizations but there is one uh, one thing that i want to highlight here do we call it companies to for placement no does wipro come here for placement no does azim pranti foundation come to placement yes as i said in the very beginning our purpose the purpose of the university is to improve social sector uh, in india uh, public education in india and public health in india so we highly encourage people and companies and organizations who are working in public sector to come and take, do the placements so we don't invite for example it companies ibm will not come google will not come microsoft will not come we will not invite them to the placements but if you are interested in getting into this kind of companies we will help you outside of the existing system if we will if you want any kind of training to go through uh, in terms of uh, writing uh, preparing for the interviews and so on so forth. preparing for the placements we will help you that kind of support we can give we will always support people to get into what kind of uh, career goals they have okay but we are as placements as providing job to a student we we are mainly focusing on public sector jobs okay does that help or does it answer the question you raised i think chennai from chennai we got the question maybe i'll i'll stop sharing here i think i'm i'm almost done with our time so maybe let me stop here maybe you can just ask me some questions if you have any uh and then we can move on to the students talking about uh, their experiences since we're talking about scholarship so let me just tell you that minimum 40% of our students are availing scholarship we highly encourage students from very difficult backgrounds to come and join our university and pursue education so uh Uh, paying fees should not be coming to your mind when you want to pursue higher education that's the message we want to also if you compare fees of our university with other private universities it's very very reasonable uh, i'm not going to tell you the name of the universities but if you go and check other private universities national private universities you will see that their fees is at least two times or at least three times more than what we are asking okay so um, maybe we can move on to the next section so i didn't talk about how the life in campus uh, really is but uh, i can't really talk anything about it because i am not living in the campus the people who are living in the campus are the students we have two students uh, with me and probably they can uh, share their experiences okay so um, yeah so over to them probably i'll i'll mute myself close my video hi uh, we are first years uh, i'm shweta and i'm doing ba in econ um and this is uh, and dayashree so i'm doing bsc mathematics and both of us are from tamil nadu uh, so when we first came to apu both of us were very nervous about the environment it was a very new place 
and we had grown up in homes uh, very and we were very nervous to explore the world but when we came here uh, we found that the seniors were very inviting and the environment itself is very inclusive so there are people from very different economic backgrounds and uh, geographical locations so you get to meet people from who follow different cultures who speak different languages different music and you, uh, and you get along with them you learn new culture and new languages too yeah so uh, i into that so i think i'll speak in tamil because everyone will understand better so first on the uh, admission process itself on the alvin prem jilla it's very different because it was easy in that order it is like simple because i applied to like a lot of universities it was the two or three i applied but then now the ap udi admission process eh vandu like it it was like it is the best place for me and mari mudiy pandra mari aichu so in the interview was the interview was vandu like first na math eduthadu vandu math nalae ella students ku vandu math edukkiradha andha maari irukum but na first apply panna one maybe in the interview is out to instructor is out to they were so jovial they were so friendly so i like vandu as in friends vandu is best nanicha so first one the navy like shweta sir the seniors on the gate la irundhe seniors were so helpful luggage carry pandradagatto enga direction solradagatto and the campus itself is so beautiful campus ka adarku munadi visit pannade illa na first time admission pandradhukku and the time na vandhen campus was so so beautiful adhu one mention pannom and uh, faculty kuda romba friendly school la konja serious a teacher student relationship or barrier irukku inga vandhu teachers kuda romba easy approach ப்ரொஃபஸர்ஸ் கூட ரொம்ப ஈஸியாக பேசலாம் அண்ட் ப்ரொஃபஸர்ஸ் கூட பேசுகிற ஏதாவது டைப் இருந்துச்சுன்னா சீனியர்ஸ் கிட்டயே கேன் கெட் ஹெல்ப் பியர் சப்போர்ட் இருக்கு ஸோ ஏதாவது ஒரு கான்செப்ட் புரியலன்னா நீங்கள் அவங்க கிட்டயே போய் கேட்கலாம் அவங்களுக்கு நல்லா எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணுவாங்க அண்ட் அகடமிக் அட்வைசர்ஸ் இருக்காங்க ஸோ உங்களுக்கு ஏதாவது உங்களோட பர்டிகுலர் கோர்ஸ்ல ஏதாவது ஹெல்ப் வேணும் இல்லை இன்டர்ன்ஷிப்ஸ் பண்றதுக்கு ஹெல்ப் வேணும்னா அண்ட் தேவ் ஹெல்ப் யூ Mm-hmm. yeah so all the pro and the courses are like mohan sana mari it's like very different and there is also the creative expression la it is my favorite subject because crx adha the short form la so exams is fun so fun na crx and the matter enakana na irukadhu vandu regulating our emotions so nammude emotional cells patti therinjikra mari or psychology kind of face panna mari varudhu so naanga class la enak vandha like three hours class irukku so class la enna pannuvom just fun activities drawings and stuff avula da pannuvom so it is very fun and but you also know a lot about yourself so idu thavathu like nariya clubs and activities irukku clubs usually la irukirathu ella university um irukum but here vandha like radio club agatum illa gender pathi discuss pandradha agatum various clubs sports eduthitingna chess badminton table tennis archery handball evlo basketball football a lot of clubs irukku so you can volunteer also there are a lot of events like knowledge based events if from forest of life nor even nadandhukku nadakka povum So, I have a volunteer and there was also a social enterprise calendar even on which. So, there are many activities on which. So, it will be busy throughout the day. It is all student-run clubs. So, if you have an idea or you want to implement it, the faculty will help you with it. And all of them are the servicing. So, you will get a lot of uh, on-hand experience. Yeah, so that's not the same. Now, we have professors and instructors. So, we have to look at the mentors. So, we have to look at the last students. We have to look at the students in a group. We have to look at the mentor and instructor. So, we have to look at the instructors. We have to look at the instructors. We have to look at the mentors. We have to look at the mentors. We have to look at the mentors. We have to look at the mentors and approachable. அண்ட் மற்ற காலேஜ்ல எல்லாம் ஹாஸ்டல்னா கேர்ள்ஸ் ஹாஸ்டல் பாய்ஸ் ஹாஸ்டல் தனியா இருக்கும் இங்க அப்படி இல்ல இட்ஸ் யூனிவர்சல் ஹாஸ்டல் ஸோ பேசிக்கலி பாய்ஸ் அண்ட் கேர்ள்ஸ் எல்லாருமே ஒரே ஹாஸ்டல் தான் இருப்பாங்க பாட்டம் ஃப்ளோர்ஸ் அதாவது ஃப்ரம் தேர்ட் ஃப்ளோர் டு ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் இட்ஸ் த பாய்ஸ் ஃபோர் ட்வெண்ட்டி எய்த் ஃபார்ட்டி எய்த் ஃபுளோர் அது கேர்ள்ஸ் ஃபோர் ஸோ ஒரே பில்டிங்ல இருப்பீங்க ஸோ குரூப் ப்ராஜெக்ட்ஸ் எல்லாம் ரொம்ப ஜாஸ்தியாவே இருக்கும் So, in the same situations, uh, you can all get together and talk about it and uh, without help, you, know, you can easily uh, get help from your peers. Although, you know, uh, campus is very safe. So, if you come to the campus, you can very freely walk around. Um, yeah, I remember if you're going outside and coming back, it's 11 o'clock in the curfew. So, if you come to the campus, you can go to the campus at 11 o'clock. I remember. And I think there's a question from GMS Thiruvallur. Yeah, please go ahead.
ஓகே சோ மேபி யூ கேன் டைப் இட் இன் தி சாட் சோ வில் கண்டினியூ சோ அதே கேம்பஸ் குள்ள வந்து யூ டோன்ட் ஹேவ் எனி டைம் லைக் ஹாஸ்டல் குள்ள இத்தனை மணிக்குள்ள இருக்கணும் அந்த மாதிரி கிடையாது சோ நீ கேம்பஸ் குள்ள கேம்பஸ் ஏ பெரிய கேம்பஸ் நீங்க பாட்டுக்கு நைட் ரோல் பாட்டு கேட் ஜாலியா வாக்கிங் போலாம் அசைன்மென்ட் ரொம்ப பிரஷர் இருந்துனா ஜஸ்ட் கோ ஃபார் a ஜாக் அந்த மாதிரி ஜாலியா இருக்கும் சோ அது மட்டும் இல்லாம இப்ப ரெசிடென்சிஸ்ல பாத்தீங்கனா ஃப்ளோர்க்கு ஃப்ளோர் கோஆர்டினேட்டர்ஸ் இருக்காங்க சோ தே ஆர் லைக் ஸ்டூடண்ட்ஸ் தேம் செல்ஃப் சீனியர்ஸ் தான் சோ இப்ப அது மட்டும் இல்லாம மென்டர்ஸ் இருக்காங்க அங்க any problems in residents or yada or complaints or yada or naaku please just approach them and talk to them they are very friendly ninga warden matri strict ala yaru irukka matanga ungalku edavadhu problem na adha solve panna ungalku help pannuvanga da thavira ellame nammi edhu seivom so it is a student run uh, system and inga um, academic matter illama if you look at other aspects uh, you will get a space to explore your own gender identity and sexuality so when your talk when your um ungal ko ena theriyala na it's and the question is that so yeah so um ஸோ அகடமிக் அகடமிக்ஸில் பார்த்தாலும் நீங்கள் உங்களுக்கு எண்ட் ஆஃப் செமஸ்டர் எக்ஸாம்ஸ் அப்படியெல்லாம் ஒன்றும் இல்லை நீங்கள் ஒரு சாப்டர் இப்போ முடிச்சிங்கன்னா யூ வில் ஹேவ் டெஸ்ட் இம்மிடியட்லி ஸோ கண்டினியூஸாக படிப்பீங்க அப்போ ப்ரெஷர் ஒரு தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் த செமஸ்டர் பில் ஆகும் அப்படியெல்லாம் ஒன்றும் இல்லை த்ரூ ஆஃப் த இயர் யூ வில் பி கன்சிஸ்டன்ட்லி சரி அவ்வளோதான் யா ஸோ அது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் ஃபுட் ஃபுட் எல்லாருக்கும் ரொம்ப இம்பார்ட்டண்ட்டானது ஃபுட்டு இங்கே வந்து இட் இஸ் யா இட்ஸ் அபவ் ஆவரேஜ் ஃபுட் அது நான் கன்ஃபார்மாக சொல்லுவேன் கொஞ்சம் ரெப்பட்டிவாக இருக்கும் லைக் டெய்லியும் சப்பாத்தி ரைஸ் பட் இங்கே நிறைய ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் இருக்கும் உங்களுக்கு வெரைட்டிஸ் ஸோ டூ பிளேசஸ் இருக்கு ஃபுட்டுக்கு இப்போ ஒரு இதில் கேம்பஸ் தர்ஷினி கஃபேன்னு சொல்லுவோம் இன்னும் நெஸ்ஸா டைனிங் இருக்கும் ஸோ ரெண்டு டைமே லைக் வெரைட்டி ஆஃப் ஃபுட் இருக்கு ஸோ லைக் ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் இருக்கு யூ கேன் சூஸ் நீங்க லஞ்சுக்கு இது வேணும்னா யூ கேன் ஜஸ்ட் சூஸ் ஆர்டர் லைக் ரெஸ்டாரண்ட் டைப் நிறைய அப்பப்போ பே பண்ணி யூ கேன் ஈட் அன் ஆர்டர் ஆர்டர் அண்ட் ஈட் ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி பிரச்சனை ஃபுட் வந்து யூ கேட் யூஸ் டு வெல் ஸோ அதுக்கப்புறம் என்னுடைய பர்சனல் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் சொன்னீங்கன்னா ஹியர் ஆக்சுவலி It's kind of a mini India. Okay, wow. So, if every state is going to be all around. So, if you look at my friends, if you look at my friends, you look at Andhra, Kerala, Kerala, and even Bihar, Kashmir. So, you know, all languages are mixed. And I'm trying to learn all languages. South Indian languages. I'm trying to learn all languages. I'm trying to learn all languages. So, if you come to the country, you can learn four years. You can learn five languages minimum. You can learn three languages. So, that's fine. And the friends, the people are also very outgoing. And the mother is gone. Munadi said that you have a very safe space. If you have any problem, you will have somebody to talk about it. Academic advice, personal problems, and if you have a little bit of a custom in English, you will have a separate course for them. You will be helpful. And um, needless to say, seniors who are interacting with seniors are very jolly. And we have dance nights, open mics. So a lot of talents that you will bring it forward. you will have workshops um delhi le irundhu instructors ella vandhu they'll teach you something like salsa uh, break uh, break dancing um nare ay to poetry adala kat kudupanga so it will be a very good learning experience yeah and sports sports vandhuna actually my personal experience is saying sports ala enak romba pidikum but i was not good at sports because in my school the sports vandhu romba serious ah kudukamatta So, I was like, 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 and the reason but if you go like you know beginner you know sports but you only know they will teach you and there are separate workshops if you look at weekly Thursday Thursday and Frisbee workshop so that's what you do so you go fresh and you know people who are also working with you know professional they will help you a lot so if you look at sports you can learn a lot and you can also go to sports fest 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 so you can also go to sports fest and you can also go to academic culture and you can also go to friends you can learn india pathi ne kattukla antidu thada ella na ella sollunga gms thiruvallu you have raised your hand you have a question let me i'll just uh, say one thing before we close ninga oru vishayam observe panirpinga they didn't call me sir they call me by my name that's the culture here we ensure that students don't hesitate to share their difficulties with us just because we there's a barrier called uh, you are sir i am a student they call they have respect but they have uh, they call us by their name we we have this 
informal relationship so we are trying to ensure that relationships are built here for life okay so you might have observed that so that's also the reason i am not calling anybody sir and madam it's a culture part of the university culture oh okay, anyway uh, that's one thing second thing is that so some of you ma tamil la solran i'll try to say it in tamil ninga sila per university ku pakkathula irukalam meaning for example ninga krishnagiri la irukalam or velur la irukalam illa dharmapur la irukalam so those who are close to the university ungalku or opportunity irukku in the saturday this uh, coming saturday we have open house to talk only about admission processes in bangalore okay so i'll just quickly share the uh, screen for you so ninga university website la poite uh undergraduate open house and type panninga appadina you can register to the thing ninga register panninga appadina you can come to the campus on saturday so we have given the schedule here ninga we will not only explain what is this program about but you will also will get a chance to look around the campus you can come with your parents or your caretakers and also you'll meet the faculty members and you can ask questions to them so i don't think a student staying in madurai will be able to do this it will be difficult for them to travel but suddenly people who are close to bangalore can suddenly come uh, it it would be of a great help if teachers can help the students to register and uh, uh, kind of help them come here uh, on saturday this saturday coming sir okay with that let me close uh, if you have any final questions please ask else we can maybe close it yeah gms tiruvallur restaurant i don't know whether it's is it needed for all of you i can't hear anybody okay thank you are you speaking okay but okay i okay so maybe shall we close is that it thanks 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 a lot and uh, i'm looking forward to uh, uh, many students applying to your university in the coming academic year thanks Thank you. Thank you.